Hello friends, Uncle Mike here. Welcome to what I'm calling my 200 subscriber special. I'm doing a quick tour de force, if you will, of my current video card collection. I have them all laid out here on the workbench and I thought I'd just go through them uh, one by one really quick, just a couple of quick bites on each, and then maybe focus just uh, a second or two on a couple of video cards I have that I think um, warrant a little recognition. Uh, we can start way down on the end. I've got these organized um, by age, by strength, you know how fast they are, 3D acceleration or not, and then uh, by manufacturer. I've um, later on down the road, I've separated out NVIDIA and ATI cards. So we start here with just an old Cirrus Logic card, just a one megabyte card. We move on to uh, an old Triton card, an old Jayton Triton card. That's got one megabyte on it. We move into uh, my Matrox Mystique with four megs. Come over to a Matrox Millennium Two, eight megs. And the Matrox cards are very well known for their 2D capabilities. Not so much their 3D capabilities. They do have some limited 3D and some games were optimized for them with certain drivers. But again, it's a matter of the uh, 2D quality. Uh, we have an S3 Trio 64. Uh, a card like this is extraordinarily compatible across all platforms. DOS, Windows, you name it. Um, it basically just works in the PCI bus. We have an S3 Verge, a Diamond Monster Stealth 3D 2000. It's got four megs on it. This was one of the first uh, sold as a true 3D card. Uh, some folks call it a 3D decelerator, but it's a, it's a 3D card. We, uh, we step back a couple of years though, get back into the Visa Local Bus era with my number nine Trio 64 card. It's an S3 card and it is upgraded to two megs of RAM. This I have in my 486 system. Sort of an off card, I have a Creative Labs DXR2. This is a DVD decoder card. I purchased this with my first DVD drive, also by Creative Labs, and it, um, it allowed you to play DVDs on basically a, a Pentium class computer, one of some of the original Pentiums. Now we get into 3DFX territory. I wish I had more 3DFX cards, I'll be honest with you. I do have a pair of Diamond Monster 3D2s, and these are both eight megabyte cards, and they do work in SLI, and these were my pride and joy when I was younger. I do have a 3DFX Voodoo Banshee, that's a 16 meg card, and as you all know, this does 2D and 3D, uh, neither of which tremendously well. But it's got, um, it comes close to the power of a single Voodoo 2. I do have a 3DFX Velocity 100. Now this is essentially a Voodoo 3 card, cut down to eight megabytes of RAM, and one of the texture mapping units, or TMUs, is disabled in OpenGL. Otherwise, in Direct 3D, it actually clocks and uh, benchmarks just about as fast as a Voodoo 3 2000. Now we get into NVIDIA territory. So, starting from least to best of what I have for the NVIDIA cards, I have a TNT Vanta LT 8 meg. I have a TNT, a standard Riva TNT 16 meg. This is a Diamond Viper 550. We've got a TNT 2 M64. This is a 16 meg card. Essentially, a cut down TNT2. I do have another TNT2 M6432 meg. Excuse me, this is the second. These are both TNT2 M6432 megs, and then we have the TNT2 M64 16 megs. I have a GeForce 2 MX200 32 megs. I have a GeForce 2 MX64 meg card. 
So the 2MX is more powerful than the MX200. The MX200 is a slightly cut down memory bus. Now, a little bit out of order, I do have a GeForce 256 DDR32 meg. This is one of my holy grail cards. This was the first true, they call it GPU, and this is a highly sought after card, and it does work. We have a GeForce 2 Pro with TV out, 64 meg. We have a TNT2 Ultra. Actually, the TNT2 Ultra should be over here in the GeForce MX, and the other GeForce cards should be over here. So let's do a little rearranging quick. There we go, that's better. Then we get into GeForce FX territory. I have an FX 5200, 128 meg on the PCI bus. I have a GeForce, this is a Mad Dog version, a GeForce 5200, 128 meg on the PCI bus again. The fan on this one's a little worn out. You can really hear the bearings chug when you turn it on. I do have a GeForce 5200 FX, 256 meg on the HEP bus. And even though I have it after these, this actually clocks faster than any FX5200 you're ever going to find. This is my GeForce 4400 Ti 128 meg. This also is a highly sought after card. It's in excellent condition, works well. I have a GeForce 66, 6800 OC. I have that label wrong. It's a 128 meg AGP card and it's my most powerful AGP card. Everything from here on is PCI Express for NVIDIA. And this card weighs a ton, and it's the first card I have in chronological order that uses an external power source. So it does need a four pin Molex. <clears throat> also has some LEDs. We have a Quadro FX 5700 256 meg. We have a GeForce 7600 GT. This is also a 256 meg card. We have an NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GTS. Now this is, um, I have it listed as 860, but it's a 640 meg card. Uh, this is also another, another sought after type of card. This one, uh, this was the first card that I had when I played a lot of Crisis and this is, of course, the most memory I had in any car to date with the 640 megs. And sorry, I wrote 860. Then I have a salvage yard find. This is an NVIDIA GeForce GT 520. This is just a two gigs. This is just an Asus throwaway card that came in a came in a system that I that I stripped down at the salvage yard. Um, I've never really used it, but I, I do own it. Now we get into ATI territory. I have two Rage Pro turbos. I have one is a compact, compact OEM card, and that's got two megs on it. And then another one by ATI. Uh, I don't know who made this version, but this does have four megs on it. And it also has room for a memory expansion for up to eight. I have yet to find a decently priced memory expansion module for this. I do have an ATI RAGE 6 SDR 32 meg. Then we get into my Radeons. I have a Radeon 7000 DDR with TV out, 64 megs. We have a Radeon 9000 128 megs, no fan on the heatsink. We have a Radeon 9550, 256 megs, also passively cooled. We have two identical, both work. Uh, they're Sapphire cards. Sapphire made all the red cards back in the day. Two ATI Radeon 9600 XT 128 meg cards. I do have an ATI Radeon 9700 Pro 128. Now we get into uh, PCI ELAND. Uh, this is a Dell OEM 
Radeon X300-128. I've never actually used it, but it is functional. I have an ATI Radeon X1300-256. A Radeon HD 2400XT, this is 256 meg. Now we get into some of the more, what well, we would say, flagship for their time cards. Uh, this is a Radeon HD 4850, 512 meg RAM, and this is an all copper heatsink. This baby is heavy. I then have a Radeon 5850 one gig. This was my first really powerful video card after the uh, GeForce 8800 GTS. And this card served me well for quite a few years. And then the most powerful one I have that's not actually in a current computer system is my Radeon R9 280, three gig. And this is an XFX and it's quite functional. The reason I'm not using it right now is the computer I'd have it in right now is actually using uh, Radeon built-in built -in Vega graphics. Um, and that's on a uh, ICP or IGP. So it's built into the CPU. So I don't need it right now. And in my current gaming computer, I just have uh, a GeForce GTX 1070. And that's my video card collection. Folks, this is every video card I own. I do plan to benchmark in upcoming videos some progression of ATI cards, a progression of NVIDIA cards, probably go head to head with certain time frames and certain cards against each other. I do want to showcase my 3DFX cards. I especially want to do some benchmarking with the um, Velocity 100 as a pseudo Voodoo 3. And then I do want to do some SLI work with the Voodoo 2s. One thing about this Voodoo 2, one of my Voodoo 2s, is it got really hot one time. And there is a warp on the card. And I do hope to do a video getting that warm and trying to work out the bend in the card. Uh, this card works sometimes and works not sometimes. Well, there you go. Thanks again for 200 plus subs. Thanks everybody for just being a part of Uncle Mike's Retro. I hope you enjoyed the walk through my video card collection. I'll do another one one of these days on all my sound cards. I am a bit of a tech hoarder. And after that, we may even roll out all the motherboards and then all the CPUs. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for, for being part of the channel and for being so supportive. Thank you.